Uh, most of the young men in this city at one point were going to the factories. Many of them were lying, saying that they were pimps. They could buy because they worked in the plant. They would buy them a Buick or a Cadillac, and they lied, talk about how they were great pimps and they had all these women, when the reality was that they were factory workers. But then you had another side of young men who were hustling, and it was very glamorous that you started knowing uh, some of them who turned to drugs, Texas Slim, uh, Monkey D. There were these names of guys who also hung out with the very stylish uh, and important men who were part of Barry Gordy's Motown. So you're looking at Holland Dozier Holland. Those were young men writing songs, making money. So you had this, this whole image of cool that had changed. Uh, some were wearing conch hair. Uh, they were driving Cadillacs, big cars. This is the Motor City. So cars were really important. And your clothing. How you dressed, if you were a player, that was a term that was thrown out, if you were truly a player. So I think that some men captured the fact that being a pimp wasn't all that it was said to be, the hard work. And then, uh, in particular with Vietnam, we begin to have the infusion of drugs for the first time seriously. Now, in my research, we go back to the 50s and found out that heroin was there. You start talking about Henry Marzette, who was a police officer and then became... Uh, a big V man in drugs, but he wasn't the only one. But the fact was that it still was hard to get into because organized crime was controlling those drugs. And so young men went from wanting to be a pimp, suddenly you had this new, this drug dealer. And the drug dealer is the first time that we begin to see money that was well beyond pimps. You started seeing uh, a different type of young black man. You started seeing Mercedes Benz's. You started seeing a Rolls Royce occasionally. You start seeing sport cars. But more importantly, the black power movement that came about, say, 67, 68. So pimping was also frowned upon. The movement was not allowing people to pimp women. Also, young black women were hearing parts of women's liberation. They, would know they may go out and be a hoe, but they wanted to be an independent hoe. Uh, they didn't want to be under a pimp. So a pimp suddenly became just out. The whole, you had Superfly was a good example of it. You remember in the movie, and for those who have not seen it, they should. Superfly is not the greatest movie, but symbolically you had a point where uh, the young man who played Priest, uh, he, was, he went from the transition of being a pimp, and he brought about this new game. And he actually ran into a pimp, which was a real New York pimp, in the movie. And... The pimp was saying, you know, I'm having all these trouble with my holes in my stable. And Priest was looking at him with his partner like, that's silly. <laughs> you run around here talking about it. You want to make real money. And I think that was the significance. Drug money was the first time that the black gangster or the black hustler, and there's a difference in my opinion, was seeing real money. And I'm talking about big money. And so he made a transformation. And Superfly as a movie showed those young men. They weren't clowns. Even they tried to make like uh, Superfly was a clown. But he was a thinker. And I think that's what you saw, a thinker minus the violence, temporarily anyway. When I say that, he knew how to move his kilos. He knew about connections. For the first time, we were seeing young black men with an option of, you can do this, not be on Wall Street, but you can do this and be a thinker. And that was very different. A pimp. Uh, was, well, we, you know, we had these romantic views of a pimp, but at the end of the day, he had to beat up a woman, exploit a woman to get his money. But a hustler now could move drugs, and out of that drug money, then he moved into other areas, that he may buy property, he might set up a shop. Uh, it's a very complex subject, I would say, but it is a time that was, I think, revolutionary. And then you begin to have guys speaking of the revolutionary, Black Panthers and others, were going after drug dealers, but they also were going after pimps. They were supposed to have been like um, our social street police, but it really wasn't like that because a lot of the guys who were doing drugs, they had their muscle. They began to be organized quite well. They weren't punks. Uh, they weren't clowns. Some of the guys started driving Volkswagens. All of them were, they were doing things. And also started intermingling. Uh, this should be a subject for you uh, as a producer when you were at Wayne State, they started messing with a different breed of young women. They weren't just going for little girls that were doing out there doing the hoochie. They started getting college co-eds. What these men represent was a new way of entrepreneurship and also what you did with that money. They're the ones that started showing up at the fights 
uh, that were Ali and Frazier. They were the ones that were traveling for the first time. We never saw that before. You're talking about traveling. You're getting your Cadillac and go to Chicago. You're getting your Cadillac and go to Alabama. But suddenly, these young men that had drug money, and it spread very quickly, the girl like, oh, I want to get with you know, Eddie or whoever, because they're going down to the Bahamas. <laughs> we or they even, some of them were talking about going overseas. They were really, there's a whole new frame of thinking that the black community had not seen before. And a lot of them were not drug users, and that's important, because traditional black Southern values said that do not mingle with musicians because they were hopheads, they were drug addicts. But the pimp, a lot of the pimps, they might drink the best liquor, uh, or like Superfly, he did the very best cocaine with his little fingernail. But overall, they were not drug users. And I think that's a difference. And I think that overall, many fought that image. They, it was okay for us to be, even as a researcher. When I talk about drug addiction as junkies, yeah, yeah, we can see that, Taylor. But when I begin to start talking about black organized crime or individuals that had entrepreneurship or were businessmen, who didn't use drugs, who were drinking milk or the best whiskey, and dress well. You know, you all this clown stuff that even the attire in um, the movie uh, New Jack City.